we're down in Biloxi for the afternoon and we just stopped by the gorgeous White House Hotel right here on Biloxi Beach. It's a beautiful, huge hotel right across from the water. And uh, this is the first time we found a Mississippi geocache. And I think this is the first time we've shown you a nano cache, which is a very tiny little magnetic cache. It just has a little strip of paper in there to, for you to write your name on. And we found it uh, on a magnetic signpost here on the street. Two. a bit of an odd experience here in Mississippi at this campground, another RPI campground. But as you can see behind me, um, the storage units here are a little bit junkier than we are used to. <laughs> so overall, I don't know, the park has nice um, spots with nice cement pads and we're in this row down here a little bit. But our view across the street is of this junkyard of dead RVs, which is a little disheartening and not very inspiring for um, a nice visit here to Mississippi. So, so far, this is our third RPI park in a list of four that we're making our way across the Gulf here where there is no thousand trails. Uh, so we've had um, not a, a super high opinion of the RPI parks so far. They've been smaller, a little junkier, um, but we don't know if that's just because of the area that they're in, the region that they're in, or maybe because it's winter, you know, we're just not seeing the parks at their best. The, the grass is um, brown and the skies are gray and it's been raining quite a lot today. It's nice and sunny, but it's been cold and rainy here all week. So that could be affecting our, our outlook. So Jason and I have been saying it kind of feels like this week we're living in a trailer park, not an RV park. Um, so just affecting our mood a little bit and our overall feelings of the area. You know, RV life is not all sunsets and beautiful vistas and spacious sights. Sometimes you have to live somewhere every single day when you're full time. Now you can see up here at the front of the park at the entrance, it looks very nice. There's this brand new, huge playground structure here. And they've got these cute little colored cabins that are all along the entrance drive. So when we first came in, I was like, oh, this is a really nice park and it's, it's clean and it's colorful. And it's really just the junkyard over at the end where we are uh, that kind of puts a pall over the park. Now we have enjoyed our time down in Biloxi. Um, seems like a nice town to explore. Some of the damage that was along the beach line there from Hurricane Katrina back in 2005 has been cleaned up, but that means that there's a lot of empty spaces down there where buildings used to be and they were never rebuilt. Uh, but unlike the Panhandle, which is still suffering from Hurricane Michael, which is only two years ago, Hurricane Katrina was now 15 years ago. And so, um, the damage is not quite so obvious there, but I think that the economic impact is still impacting the Bluxy area. in Biloxi we're visiting a museum that we drove by the other day and I thought we have to go there that sounds so interesting the Jefferson Davis presidential library and museum so Jefferson Davis of course was the president of the Confederate States during the Civil War I had no idea that he would have his own presidential library because he wasn't a president of the US um, and this is uh, the site also includes the house that he lived in after the war so I'm really excited to see this today
So this was the house that Jefferson Davis and his wife lived in after the Civil War. And it was originally built in the 1850s as a summer home for a family with 13 children. Um, it was a plantation owner from northern Mississippi. This was his summer house. So there's some little cottages on either side. This little cottage here was the schoolhouse for the 13 children. And this little cottage over here was the circuit rider's house. Uh, the tour guide was explaining that in the 1850s, there was only about four or five major houses in Biloxi, and there was no established church here. So a circuit riding preacher would stay one night at each house and just travel around the city preaching and also doing some teaching. We wondered if maybe he was the teacher of the children. The tour guide wasn't sure. Um, so if you watched our intro to our channel video, you know that the reason we're called Circuit Riding RV is because Jason works with church planters, people starting new churches, and we've been pastors in the past, and we take our name from these circuit riding preachers who would get on their horse and just ride the circuit, preaching in different towns and homes. Nowadays, they rent out the circuit rider's cabin for $120 a night. You can stay here uh, for a little vacation. In 2005, when Hurricane Katrina hit Biloxi, uh, this house was here, and it is the main floor of it is 26 feet high and the storm surge from the hurricane was 28 feet high so there was actually two feet of water in the main floor of the house but the beams of the floorboards inside of there were so saturated with linseed oil over the past hundred years that the water just flowed off of it they didn't have to do any restoration to the floors in the house just a general cleanup however the back porch and most of the roof was torn off you can see in this photo from this magazine all the destruction that happened to the house. So they've been slowly restoring it and rebuilding it. Some of the inside's not done yet. But the tour guide said that uh, of all of the Victorian homes that were along Biloxi Beach at the time of the hurricane, this is the only one still standing from Victorian times. So the original owners of this house who had the 13 children, there's only a few bedrooms inside and I asked the tour guide, where did all these children sleep? He said that there was two daughters each one had their own bedroom, and the 11 boys slept underneath the house in hammocks. But it was only a summer vacation house, it wasn't their main residence, and he said actually it was cooler under the house, so they probably liked it that way. We just noticed here at the Beauvoir Museum, we saw an RV parked over here and I said maybe it's a work camper, but there's actually hookup sites here for RVs and it's just a regular camping sign. There's electrical posts and sewer, about four or five sites, and somebody's staying here. That's interesting. Turns out those camping spots up near the entrance are just for the general public to rent for $20 a night. No sewer, but there is electric and power. Interesting. And that one RV that's there, I guess, is a permanent worker who lives here on the site. We're trying to get out to the water to have some lunch. We found this little park. <laughs> We're not sure how to get out there, but we see those RVs out there. And if they can do it, we can do it. I suspect that this whole area had buildings on it before Hurricane Katrina came over that wall. And the tour guide said the storm surge was 28 feet, which would be four trucks stacked on top of each other. Our truck is seven feet high. And the buildings were just wiped out and they never replaced them. We decided to come down to the Biloxi Beach Boardwalk and take a little walk here. The tour guide at the house told us that Biloxi Beach is the longest man-made beach in the world, 26 miles long. It's a lovely day for a walk.
Soto National Forest, and we wanted to do a country drive, so we're driving through the forest, nice and peaceful here. I gotta say, this sunny day has really reset my attitude about Mississippi. Um, it's been gray and rainy for the past few days, and I've just been hunkered down in, in the RV and not doing much, and just feeling kind of, uh, this place is not very nice, and uh, there's not much to do here, but we had a great day in Biloxi today at the museum and on the beach, and now we're taking a nice forest drive. So I was glad that we had this opportunity to uh, get a little bit better experience of Mississippi. and for subscribing. We've had several new people join us here and we'd love to get to 100 subscribers. So if you haven't already, hit subscribe and that will really help us reach our goal. In case you didn't know, our videos run about four to five weeks behind where we actually are. If you want real-time updates of our travels, head over to Facebook or Instagram and follow our Circuit Ride and RV pages. Every Wednesday, I put up a real-time post of where we are if you want to follow along that way. See you next time.